Hi everyone and welcome to today's Biology Daily Booster, number 19 in the series. Do note this is one of those advanced information listed topics, so it is important. What we are going to be doing today is having a look at basically plant hormones. Now, plant hormones is something that can come up on both foundation and higher, and for those of you doing higher tier, they've also listed the tropism experiments as something you need to know. First thing, what is a tropism? Quite simply, a tropism is a growth in response to an external stimulus. So this is how our plants respond to the external environment. Two types of tropism you need to know as far as GCSE papers go. Phototropism, which is all about light, and gravitropism, which is about gravity. The key hormone, and if you only remember one hormone as far as plants go, this is it, is called auxin. Now, auxin is produced near tips of shoots and tips of roots, and it's going to have an effect on the ability of cells to elongate. The effect it has is different in the shoots compared to the roots. So, auxin in shoot cells is going to stimulate cell elongation. So basically, if you have auxin in cells of the shoots, then they do get longer. Whereas, if you have auxin in cells of the roots, it inhibits that cell elongation. Let's have a little look at phototropism first of all. So phototropism, photo meaning light, tropism, growth in response to. So this is the growth in response to light. What we can see is we have two terms, either positive or negative phototropism. If something demonstrates positive phototropism, that means it grows towards the light. So this is things like our shoots. They are going to grow towards the light, obviously to make sure they maximize the amount of light they can absorb for photosynthesis. Negative phototropism, they grow away from the light. So the experiment we could do here, you might've done this. It's basically where you've got a bunch of usually crest seeds. And what you're going to do is have some of the crest seeds in a little Petri dish just growing on a windowsill somewhere or in the lab or with a light shining directly down from above. Then you'll have another little dish of crest seedlings usually shoved in some kind of makeshift cardboard box with a little gap at one side. Now, what we will find is those in the box are going to grow towards the light, so they're all gonna to bend towards that hole in the box. Those that are just growing with the light directly above grow directly up. Now, the way that this works is, as we said, auxin is produced in the tips. So here's the little tip of our shoot. Auxin is produced here, and then it diffuses back in the actual shoot. So the auxin diffuses down, and what it does is it accumulates on the shaded side. So you can see on this side here, which is the side and the shade, because the sun's on that side, the right there, shining this way, then we get an accumulation of auxin on the shaded side. It causes those cells to elongate, and the whole shoot then bends towards the light. So that's our phototropism. Gravitropism is response to gravity. So positive gravitropism grows in the same direction of gravity, i.e. down into the ground. Negative gravitropism, opposite direction to gravity, so up into the sky. The way that we can investigate that is using a bit of equipment called a clinostat. Now a clinostat is basically like a little plastic cup that just constantly spins. Because if you put your little bean seed, in this case, into the clinostat and have it constantly spinning, then what we end up with is the root and the shoot just grow horizontally. So there is no difference there. If, however, we leave it on the side, what we find is that the auxin, again, produced in the tips, diffuses back, is going to accumulate on the side closest to basically the earth, because it accumulates on the side that gravity is acting. So that means if we've got an accumulation of auxin in the shoot, then that's going to cause cells to elongate. So the bottom of our shoot here is going to elongate. The cells on top are not going to elongate and therefore it bends up. Whereas in the root, 
still accumulates on that lower side, but remember, auxin in the roots inhibits cell elongation. So the cells on top are going to be larger than the ones underneath, so it bends down, meaning roots grow into the ground. So the last part of our booster today, we're going to have a look at how we can use plant hormones as humans. So auxins, as we've already said, can be used to stimulate growth because they cause this cell elongation. A second thing they can be used for is regulating the development of fruit. As far as hormones that you need to know go, there are three. Auxins, ethene, gibberellins. When it comes to the auxins, as we've said, these stimulate growth by causing cell elongation and they help regulate fruit development. Ethene is a gas that causes fruit to ripen because it causes the starches to be changed into sugars. And gibberellins, they promote growth, particularly stem elongation. And importantly, they also end dormancy of seeds and buds, i.e. these are the ones that are going to kick in to actually allow seeds to germinate at the right time. Now, one of the things they can ask you to do is to name which hormone is used for a particular purpose. So we'll go through these and I'm hoping you're going to pick a very common pattern as we go through. So the first one is killing weeds. What we actually have in weed killers that we use in our gardens then are selective herbicides. What that means is they're not going to kill everything, but they're going to kill what we refer to as broad leaved plants. They won't kill narrow leaf plants like grass. So they'll kill the dandelions in your lawn, but not the grass that makes it up. And these weed killers contain auxins because what it does, it makes the weed grow really fast and actually kills it as a result. Second use is a rooting powder. So when we take a cutting, you'll dip it in a rooting powder to help it to grow roots. And this is again, auxins used for that. Third use is in terms of our fruit trees. So if we spray our fruit trees with auxin, it will delay ripening. Now, the whole purpose of doing this means that we can then collect the harvest at the same time and it avoids fruit dropping off the trees early and therefore becoming damaged. If we want to ripen fruit, then we use ethene. So this is the first time we've not said the word auxin. So ethene is sprayed on fruit trees and plants to help fruit ripen quicker. So this means that we can kind of force it to be ready earlier in the growing season than it would be naturally. Next one is making seedless fruit or what we call parthenocarpy. Now, what we do here is we'll apply auxin to unpollinated flowers. And as a result, the plant produces fruit because it's not been pollinated. That fruit will have no seeds, hence seedless fruit. Then we come on to controlling dormancy. So again, we've got a different hormone here. We're using our gibberellins here. If you spray those seeds with gibberellins, it triggers germination. However, note, auxins also work for that as an answer. So hopefully what you've picked up as a bit of a pattern there is, if in doubt, go with auxin, because in virtually every case, it is correct. So as I say, great if you can learn them all, if not, and you're sitting there thinking, I really can't remember which one this is, just write down auxin, because in virtually every case, you've got the mark there anyway. Last thing to do for today then is head on over and have a go at the quiz to check how well you've understood the work from today. Obviously, if there are bits you're not certain on, you can obviously head over to the main video on the channel for that re relevant section, or you can check your revision guides, your notes, and just go over and consolidate that work. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for our next daily booster.